Life's complicated. Pop a squat in JR's media mud bath. This is an extremely primitive and paranoid culture. Media News, episode 115. Crunchy milk boots. Like, hey folks, how you doing? Comic Book Man here. Welcome once again to my video outhouse. It's time for Media News with Mucus. M mucus. Yeah, good old Mucus. Oh. Not, not feeling so well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Media News, as always, is coming to you from Alternate Reality, which is located at the intersection of 111th and Kedzie. Speaking of mucus. Beautiful downtown Mount Greenwood, where the streets flow <laughs> with mucus 24 we're, we're in Wow. Ground. There's an image. <laughs> <laughs> Alternate reality, or all new comics, fifteen percent off every day for everyone. Well, that's a lot. Jr. What? It's a sad day. I am. I am. Oh, I am. No, I am no, betwixt no, and between. Are you because, a little overclamped? I'm feeling because I, you know, I, I never want to make fun of someone who's passed because that's a terrible thing no. to do. You never should. No. But this sack of crap. Oh wait a minute! Wait a minute! <laughs> wait a minute. Oh, wait, <laughs> man. No, we are here. Well, let's first tell the folks <laughs> but, who but we're talking about. This fine individual just recently passed away. When did he pass away? Uh, last week. Last week. He last just week. Passed we were away. not last here to do media news. Yeah. Last week, our time. Uh, this man is responsible for having brought us. The whole gamut this man of, of a types lot of, of movies. movies. Let's not make them guess. It's 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 Dino De Laurentiis. Everyone die when Dino <laughs> die. <laughs> Dino Babies De cry, adults cry, children cry, everybody cry. For those of you out there that know the name, you're probably thinking, man, that miserable King Kong remake. Man, that miserable Dune <laughs> well, adaption. That miserable man. Flash Gordon yeah. movie. <laughs> <laughs> but, all right, now let's give credit where credit is due, comic book man. Uh, uh, Dino you... produced a lot of stuff starting in Italy. Back he also in... made that miserable Barbarella movie. <laughs> yes, he did, he did. But he's also that responsible for bringing America things like Fellini's La Strada, mm. Knights of Cabrera. He also gave us King Vidor's War and Peace. Uh, he came Serpico. over to America, gave us Serpico. War and Peace is pretty crummy for me. <sighs> it's not terrible. Henry Fonda? Uh, yes. That's a pretty yeah. crummy well, movie, actually. Well, it's not terrible. <laughs> he also brought Serpico, Three Days of the Con Condor, Death Wish for all intents and purposes. Not a great movie, but it did. Uh, we like the Charles Bronson. Hey, we like the Charles Bronson. Uh, things like The Dead Zone from, from David Cronenberg. Also gave us a lot of junk. <laughs> like the Dead Lodgy. Zone from David Crow. A lot of stuff like like Mandingo. Mandingo. Remember Mandingo? Yes, Mandingo? And of course the aforementioned uh, Dune Adaption. Conan. Red Dragon. Maximum Overdrive. Do yeah. you remember the Maximum Overdrive? Ragtime, Jimmy Cagney's final film performance. But also, you know, Sam Raimi's uh, Army of Darkness films and all that stuff. Yeah. That was him. So it's a very career because he produced so damn much, you're going to have some stinkers in there too. But... Yeah, but the stinkers he made were were incredibly rank. <laughs> they were incredibly <laughs> rank. I mean, he took he took some of, some of the most cherished properties fantasy properties out there and just totally hoard them out. Well, he never thought small. <laughs> there was no such thing as a small movie to Dino. It was always big. It had Dino, to be Dino big. never had problems throwing money at a exactly. project. Where he got this money, I don't know. Oh, you don't want to know. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to know. Well, he's from Italy. Hmm. Well, you show. What? Look, let's Ooh. not even. Don't All even. All right. Don't even go there. Wait a minute. Mr. Sinatra's on the phone. Wait a minute. <laughs> don't even go All there. All right. I'll stop. All don't. right, so Dino's gone, and it's a, it's a sad day here at the... Yeah, well... Sort of. It's a damn shame. Uh, <laughs> it's a damn shame. Where do you want to go? Uh, moving on. George Clooney. George, George Clooney, Clooney wants to be yeah, well, a man from the United <laughs> Nations... Yeah? I, I don't remember the show either. You I don't remember it either. Central... Uh, League of lucky Extraordinary Gentlemen. <laughs> extraordinary Gentlemen. <laughs> Uncle! Uncle! Frequent collaborator of Clooney's is director Steven Soderbergh. They did the Oceans films together. Yes. Soderbergh has a new project. Yes. The Man from Uncle. <laughs> I've heard that so The before. venerable 60s spy series yes. that, that wrote on the coattails of James Bond and any number of spy series of the time. Now, were they planning on doing this up like The Man from Uncle? Yes, or are they just sir. taking the title and running no, with sir. it? No, sir. It's going to be set in the 60s. Oh, man. It will man. be set in the 1960s. What's up with doing period piece stuff? We did a thing before about uh, uh, X-Men um, first, first, first Class being set in the 60s, I have too. no problem with that. I would rather keep it in its, in its home era than start bouncing stuff around into modern day. Okay. Uh, uh, Soderbergh screenwriter Scott Burns, who works on all the Soderbergh films, is writing the adaption. George Clooney is going to be playing Napoleon Solo. Yeah. So, Who's playing Ilya Kiriakin? We don't have an Ilya Kiriakin yet. 
Oh, uh, what British actor could pull off a lousy Russian Liam accent? Neeson. <laughs> Liam Neeson. <laughs> Liam Neeson. No, hey. he could be mother. What was the name of the guy who ran uh, the stuff? Uh, J. Carol. Q. R. J. Carol Nash. No, or no. Lewis R. Carroll or <laughs> J. Lewis, Lewis Carroll. Carroll. Hey, Lewis Carroll. Some guy named Carroll. I think it was J. Carol Nash. It no, it wasn't J. Carol Nash. It, w- it was some. We'll look him up and we'll report back. We'll have we'll, we'll have the information on your mother. desk by 10 a.m. Monday. Yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah, man from Uncle's coming. Watch your desk. Uh, we have some more uh, people joining the ranks of Hangover Two. Some yes. cameos. <laughs> Cameos. Well, who do you think? Well, we're going to start. We're going to start with one and move on to the other. Paul Giamatti is going to be cameoing. <laughs> yeah, <as> the, <laughs> we I feel your pain. <laughs> president, former president. Former president. Well, no, still, yeah, but president. Uh, president still yes. referred to as president. Yeah. Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton yes. is flying out to Bangkok. <laughs> <laughs> to film, Actually, to he flew out already. Yeah, it's over done with. Him. He's already done his part. It, yeah, it's already going to happen. So uh, you know, we don't need Mel Gibson. We got a former president. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A uh, story that I mentioned in the weekend review for last week, our time. I think that was the the I forget what the date was, the tenth or something. Come in story. But the Green Hornet film. Yes. The Green Hornet film uh, scored a ninety three percent positive uh, response rating at a uh, screening. Uh, Sony held a screening for a, co- a group of people that were unaware of what they were going to see. Yeah. Herded a group in, filled the place up. And what they call the top two boxes, which is excellent and very good, mm-hmm. scored a ninety-three percent. Now, someone who was which at is, which is big, someone it's, it's huge, and I think yeah. Sony more than anyone was surprised by that, considering uh, the internet as well as us have been poo-pooing that movie from day one. And I said, I said that a week in review. Uh, we have talked about what a stinker this looks like it's supposed to be, and maybe not. Someone who was at the screening posted at a movie type of website and said that they were there and said the film has a definite Iron Man vibe to it. Okay. It has a lot of action stuff, but also has a lot of humor, and the mix is good. We could have been wrong, kids, so maybe the Green Hornet will... Uh, if we're wrong, I will be the first one to admit Me it. Too. I Nobody is looking for a bad Green Hornet no. film. None no. of us are looking for a bad Green Hornet film. But if they're going to make a stinker, they're going to make it, so why the hell... Should any of us get in line to go see it no. and talk about how great no. it is? But if they're going to make, if it winds up being good, I'll be the first one to eat crow. I'll be the first one to eat crow. Cowboys and Aliens yes. director John, John Favreau. John Favreau just saw the trailer for Cowboys and Aliens. Looks fun. He already has another project lined up. And and it, and it's incredibly cheap. And it's a ripoff. <laughs> yeah, the concept's a it's, ripoff. It's basically a big commercial. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be directing a film for Disney. You yes. ready? It's entitled The Magic Kingdom. Now, what could The Magic Kingdom possibly be well, about if it's for Disney? Let me tell you, Kyle. A murder is loose in the park. Yes, <laughs> a murder is loose in the park. It's about a serial killer. No, <laughs> it is a Night at the Museum-esque family adventure yeah. that takes place at the aforementioned Magic Florida Kingdom. Mickey theme comes alive. Park. So Disney's people. basically going to pump a bunch of money into what is essentially a big travelogue. Come to Disney and have a bunch of fun with John Favreau and the kids. It's going to be a two-hour infomercial on basically, Disneyland that commercial. you're going to pay ten dollars to go see. A big travel commercial. So Disney so I would assume that all the characters are actually going to come to life in the middle of the night, like, sure. like in Night at the Museum. Mickey with the big rubber head will actually be a real, I don't know, I don't have no idea how this Well, is if you be. saw Evening at uh, Smithsonian, the second uh, Night at the Museum uh, movie, you know that that's basically just a big ad for the Smithsonian so, Institution uh, and all their all their different buildings, which uh, there are worse things in the world to make ads for sure. Smithsonian than the Smithsonian. Yeah. But that's all That's all the movie essentially was, was a big travelogue ad for it. And, and this... The, but that, but well, that, that's a national museum. That's a national museum. Exactly. This is a theme park no, that you there, pay eighty bucks to walk in the door. You, you could actually make a positive <laughs> comment about getting people to go to yeah the, the, the museum. The, the museum. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. But to go to Disneyland, it's like Disney saying. Hey man, how can we get more people to come to Disneyland? <laughs> yeah, you're you're paying eighty bucks to walk in the door for Christ's sake. If you if you dump in parking it's, and everything else, it's it, it costs you eighty bucks. It's really cynical. But I was there a couple of years ago. Welcome to America. Welcome to America. Uh, CBS is planning yes. a remake of. Uh, <laughs> oh wait a minute. Well, Hawaii Five always is a, is a yes. fairly big You're success. About that, yeah, Hawaii. yeah, big success. So, what is CBS planning on doing? What do you do when you have something that's a remake and a success? You delve into uh, the archives for more. The Virginian. No, the Wild Wild West. <laughs> oh. And is somebody getting Will Smith on the phone? <laughs> Battlestar uh, Galactica Redux creator Ron Moore. And a, a, good guy uh, to get. and a former CSI showrunner will be writing and executive producing the pilot. That's a good guy to get. Yeah. And yeah. and I'm actually I'm look you told me that he's gonna be doing this. Yeah. I'm looking yeah, forward to it. Yeah, now you kind of look I'm forward the, to it when well, you got a name like that attached. Well yeah, he's not a slouch. Yeah. He's not a slouch. He knows how to take a silk uh, sow's ear and turn it into a silk 
purse. Okay, and last story is the final yep. five episodes of Caprica. Caprica. Airing on the, we'll finally get to air the final five, get it? The final oh, five episodes. Starting January 4th, fans, so that's it. Even though they're going to be out on DVD in like two weeks. They're putting the box set out before they air the last five episodes because they just don't care anymore. I just don't care. Well, January 4th. It, I'm glad that they have such quality control and such care over their product. Hey, they got Mansquito to worry about. Yeah, Mansquito 2 is coming. <laughs> more giant stuff. And that's it. That's we're it. Done. We're done. We're finished. We're out of here. We've got no more media news, but you can go to the store's website, check out all of his reviews. My reviews. And all of Bo's news. Yeah. And the only place you can do that is at Sarah. www.myalternatereality.com. Think of what could happen if you don't go. Stop off at the store's website and check out all of his reviews and all his news. Until next time, this is me. And this is me. Saying, bye. Hey folks, Comic Book Man here, wishing all of you a happy holiday season. Once again, Alternate Reality is teaming up with the Lions Club of Illinois to help alleviate hunger here on the South Side. Anytime between now and December the 9th, if you stop down at the store, bring your non-perishable food item with you and stick it in the Lions Club donation box. They'll be picking it up on the 9th, and they'll be distributing it to families who are in need all throughout the South Side. Now, if you can't make it to the store, go to the Mount Greenwood Lutheran Church, located at 10911 South Trumbull Avenue, and make your food donation directly through them. Be sure to call ahead before you go down. Or give Colleen a call at 708-363-5998. She's with the Lions Club, and she can tell you how you can help out as well. Happy holidays, everyone from all of us here at Alternate Reality. Alternate Reality is located at 3149 West 111th Street. That's the intersection of 111th and Kedzie in Chicago, the beautiful downtown Mount Greenwood neighborhood. You can always reach us at 773-881-HERO or at the store's website, www.myalternatereality.com.